Uh, welcome back everyone to the midweek we are t1d podcast this is the episode for you the listeners where we share one of your stories that you have sent in and this week it is from have we got a name this week or is it anonymous uh, it's lucas lucas there we go thank you lucas for sending that in so yeah this week's story goes like this it's time for a giggle what's the story Hi, Mike and Jack. Just want to say, after the police chase episode, I feel confident in sharing this. Ooh. Warn your listeners, it involves a bit of cannabis, but it's legal where I'm from, so no crimes committed. Touch. Lucky man. So there's your warning, guys, yeah? There is your warning. That is a disclaimer. This episode will involve drugs. Yes. Drugs. Right. Goes... I've been type 1 diabetic for 11 years. I'm now 27. So my growing up days and my experience days were as a diabetic. When I was about 19, my friend Jan just got a new car. So we went for a little drive and ended up even buying some cannabis. I had never actually smoked it before. Jan did all the time, but my parents were against it. So I always refused. But I was a bit down about my life a little. So I thought it would give me a bit of an escape. So me and Jan were smoking in the car. The car was getting proper smoky. I couldn't stop laughing. It was actually so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a CGM back then, so I n- never knew what my sugars were. So I didn't really care. <laughs> wow, fair enough. Okay. I bet you could relate to that, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I can relate big time. Right. <laughs> All of a sudden, though, I felt low. So Jan drove me home. It was literally about a kilometer away so not far i walked in and my parents were gathered around the television completely unaware of my blurry state my mum was like hey lucas i was i was nervous but outburst hey mom hey dad (laughs) they both looked at me like you're a bit happy and i burst out laughing (laughs) then my dad stood up and said i look fucked oh (laughs) after having a good look at me and asked why my eyes are so red have you been smoking (laughs) <laughs> oh, you busted. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I'm hypo. That's why Jan dropped me back so early. And I've been hypo for so long, it's made my eyes itchy. <laughs> I'm like, where this is good. <laughs> oh, my God. My parents didn't really understand my condition. To be honest, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> my mum got up and fetched me an orange juice and said, drink that, Lucas. Then I was like... I need some food, mum. She ended up making me a sandwich, then I had some ice cream. Oh, the munchies really kicked in. (laughs) (laughs) I was just sitting there with my mouth like, mum, I'm Phil Hypo, come on. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) just another scoop, come on. (laughs) Bit of cream, bit of squirty, squirty sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Oh. I was like, thanks, mum. I feel a lot better now when I went to bed. I was like, diabetes can get me out of anything. It's actually great. <laughs> I giggled myself to sleep while watching Identity Theft that was on TV. <laughs> That's a wicked next- film as well. Yeah, yeah, it was a good film. That was years ago, fucking yeah. hell. The next morning I woke up with stable sugars and no trace of the previous night's mischief. I tiptoed down to breakfast, smirking at my parents, who were (laughs) clueless about my little adventures. (laughs) I had eggs for breakfast and the best... I had eggs for breakfast and the best excuse card for life. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, keep up the great work on the podcast. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Oh, Oh, well done, Lucas. that That is wicked. All right, he wicked. also he's got a question. He goes, okay. also, do you guys smoke weed? You both laugh so much and I get a vibe you might. Either that or you just really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, I may have dabbled in it a little bit, but no, I do not smoke it now. <laughs> I've used it. There we go. <laughs> I'm, ju- I'm just, I'm just very laughy. That's why we're just happy people. 
It's yeah, ha- sometimes. Happy, happy, happy. Well, if you listen to the podcast, you know it is up and down more than your sugar graph sometimes. So it's just, yeah. One week we're moaning, one week we're happy. It's just, that's what it is. But we try and laugh as much as we want because laughter, apart from insulin, is the best medicine. Yes, and we never want to make you, well, not make you listen, have you listen to the podcast and bring you down. Why would we want to bring people down? Exactly. Exactly that. Good vibes only. Good vibes only. Enjoy your life. Glass is always half full. And we are the glass. We are the glass. I like that, mate. I like it. Do what you want with the, with the filling. Yeah. Fuck it. Put some coke in it, if you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Diet, if you're not. <laughs> no, fuck that. Zero. <laughs> Diet's disgusting. Pepsi Max Cherry. Oh, Ooh, now it's all. Oh, no. That's a game changer, bro. That's a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, anyway, thank you very much, Lucas, for sending that in. It was a brilliant story. I'm sure everyone at some stage of their life has pulled out a diabetes card. We've had so <laughs> many talks about this on the podcast as well. There's oh, been yes. quite a few stories about it. I've, I've probably used it quite a lot. Yeah. But fuck Given it. a condition and a card. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's a get out of any social event you don't want to go to card. That's what I use it for. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. That's I'm why, not, that's why uh, you didn't come to my wedding. <laughs> you weren't I, even even that big then. <laughs> I was just young and didn't want to come, bro. I wasn't even old enough to drink. Yeah, that's why you didn't want to come. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if anyone else has any stories where you've played a diabetes card, we like these ones because they're so yeah. relatable to everyone. So please let us know when you've been using your diabetes card to get out of anything. Right, guys, as the episodes are getting a bit shorter, guess what? We're going to throw in another story. <gasps> Ooh. Two stories. You lot are spoiled, bruv. You're so spoiled. You are spoiled. We won't do another jingle because it's a surprise. <laughs> and you've already heard it once. What's the extra story? <laughs> <laughs> so this extra story is from Alex. And it goes a little bit like this. It's queuing up to get in a new nightclub with my friends. There was security with dogs searching people, which is pretty standard. As I neared the entrance and happily opened my bag to show them I had nothing but money, phone and insulin, the sniffer dog started barking and wagged his tail at me. The security was ruthless, grabbed me by the arm and took me to the side. The, oh, ooh, that's a no-no ooh, for me, bro. Yeah. Get your hands off me. Uh, I was so embarrassed and was trying to explain to them it was just insulin, nothing illegal. It keeps me alive. After a few minutes of heavily searching every inch of my bag and patting me down and shouting at me, they realised the dog was, wasn't was trained enough to smell the difference between a legal and an illegal substance. Oh, wow. I complained I'd waited an hour in the queue and only to be dragged away for no reason. So they escorted me inside to my friends and I didn't even have to pay. That's oh, fair good. enough, but still, yeah. like, like, nah, get yeah. your hands off me. They must have felt guilty for humiliating me in front of hundreds of people. Yeah, good. fucking good. Yeah, good. Good. That's a good story. Thank you. Yeah. That's... Cheers, Alex. That's a good there story. Go. I like that because that's a real life situation. Yeah. And another one about drugs. <laughs> yeah, it's just not illegal. Oh, well, they're both legal because his was from legal in his country, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And technically, it's it... legal in every country. <laughs> yeah, it is. And that's, could you no, imagine what? it? Cannabis is legal in the UK. You just have to have a prescription for it. Ah, there we go. And it can be acquired medically if you have a medical reason. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's why the fuck have they got the dogs if they can't? Do it properly. Yeah, that's stupid, bruv. That's stupid. Mate, I'd want VIP for a year. I'd want fucking compensation. I would have gone in there and got my friend to squeeze the shit out of my arm until it bruised, and then the next day I would have took pictures and said, there you go, that's what you fucking done to me, you little animal. I want compo. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 You're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> It's, don't manhandle me then, bro, for no reason. Wind your neck in and do your job properly. Yeah, exactly. Just say, all right, pay. Thanks. 
Yeah, have you got any drugs? No. Fuck off. They don't even search people properly these days. It's ridiculous. Do you know what the thing thing that you could have done, though, is take the insulin out of the bag and then put the bag on the floor and see if the dog would have gone and indicated to the bag again. Therefore, you know that it's indicating to the insulin and not anything else that's in the bag. Yeah, but maybe she didn't want everyone to know. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm saying, like, the security guards. Like, if you're standing there arguing, but, like, if she's telling her, like, you're adamant, like, no, it's insulin, there's nothing else in my bag, take your insulin out and hold it in your hand, put the bag 10 metres away on the floor, see if the dog goes to the bag or the insulin. There you go, you know, there you go. Do you know what I'll say? Fucking try it. In it, have a go, bruv. Go on, put four units in you and see how good you feel. Just two units, mate. That's all they need. To use lose use a lantern or some sort of receiver or something like a long lasting one so it makes you feel like shit very slowly. Oh, actually no, this is terrible. We we're, we're joke. This is, no, <laughs> no. Yeah, no, that's bad, isn't it? That's <laughs> I'm getting evil. <laughs> oh, don't piss off a diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, and on that note yeah well let us honestly let us know if anyone else has been in a situation like that before where you've had problems getting in somewhere with your insulin and think ah I can throw this in quickly because it's quite relatable go on when I went I went to Hammersmith Apollo the other day to go and see a show and there was metal detector x-ray machines there like body scanners yeah now I'm not convinced that it's really going to mess up my sensor but I've been advised that when you go through airports and things you're not allowed to go through the metal detector because of the sensor the waves or whatever goes on in between them fucking Who told you this, doorway though? things the nurse and it's oh, on okay. it's on it's on the um letter that they give you when you take your stuff through the airport oh okay it actually says this person wears a medical device and is not to be like the medical device is you don't you do not go through an x-ray machine uh, so I've gone up to the geezer I've clocked the machine straight away he's always looks at me like well you, you're gonna go through them I just went no <laughs> no no I just went, just went up to the matey security guard I was like ah, what is that bruv x-ray you're in there's body scanner I was like yeah, I ain't going through that he looked at me <laughs> funny obviously he was, why I was like I've got medical device on my arm mate I was like I'm type 1 diabetic so I show I had a long sleeve shirt on so I've just yeah. pulled it really tight so he could see it. I was like, look, it's like a lump. And he sort of looked at me all stupid. And I was like, I'm type 1 diabetic. And it's like medical. And he just sort of like something clicks in his head or something. He just went, oh, okay, okay. Just go through here. So he's opened the gate for me. I've walked up to the next lot and there's another fucking metal detector. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. But the matey there was sweet. He just looked at me. I was just like, bruv, I ain't going through that. I've just had this conversation with a geezer. He, looked, he was just like, why not? So I just said, like, I've got a medical device on my arm. I've, I'm type 1 diabetic. And he just went, yeah, no worries, bruv. Go through. I'm just like, sweet. <laughs> See you later. Wait, so they didn't even pat you down? No. That's mad, because that's like when I went to Fort Park. Um, obviously, I've got my injection needles, everything in my bag. Yeah. I just said, look, I'm type 1 diabetic, there's an injection in there, there's needles. He just went, yeah, all right then, and just pushed my bag to the side. He didn't even fucking check it. Yeah, yeah, this is like... It's, it's not it's good. It's mad. Because, no, because people can use this, mm. like, as a bad thing. Yeah, that is very true. So there needs to be a way for people to actually, like, do this properly. Well, I know for a fact in the airport, you have to tell them that I'm not allowed to go through the scanner, but you, you're you going to have to body search me manually, like with the wand. Oh, you like the wand, didn't you? Oh, a bit of wandage. Yeah. You always go there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go play with our wand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let us know if you've had any run-ins like that before, people, and keep your stories coming in. We shall see you same time, same place next week, back on Sunday. Take care, everyone, and thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And don't do drugs.